Hello and welcome back. It's been a while since I recorded the last video on IP version 4. It's monsoon season here in Chennai and it's been raining heavily for the past few days. I had been away at my in-laws place enjoying the monsoon and after the short break I'm really excited to be back with you talking about JNCIA. The focus for this video is going to be IP version 6. The topics that we're going to cover in this video We'll start by looking at the basics of IP version 6. We'll then take a look at the IP version 6 header format and we'll compare it with the IP version 4 header. The IP version 6 address looks a little bit different compared to the IP version 4 address. So we'll take a look at the format of an IP version 6 address and we'll also see what are the rules for writing IP version 6 addresses. We'll then take a look at the different IP version 6 addresses, the different types of addresses, and finally, we'll touch a little bit upon IP version 6 subnetting. Let's start. Talking about IP version 6, so we had IP version 4 and we looked at IP version 4 in the last video. And from IP version 4, we have moved into IP version 6. If you were wondering what happened to the IP version 5, well, the answer is in the early days of networks, there was a protocol called as the Internet Stream Protocol and that protocol later evolved into stream protocol version 2. This version 2 of the stream protocol was given IP version 5. So when we had to move from IP version 4 to IP version 6, we did not have the 5 in between. So we had to make this jump from 4 to 6. That's the reason you don't have an IP version 5, but you directly have IP version 6. Before we start understanding IP version 6, let's take a moment and understand why we are moving to IP version 6. In the IP version 4 video, we talked about the different classes of IP address. And if you remember, we had classes A to E for IP version 4 addresses. However, class D and class E were reserved. We could not use class D and class E for assigning to computers. Out of the class A, B, and C, each class had one range of addresses reserved for private IP communication and that was RFC 1918. Excuse me, RFC 1918. So in every class of IP address, one complete range of address was removed or reserved. Apart from that, we had one more range of address in the class A, which is 127.0.0.0 slash 8, completely reserved for loopback communication. So you see what's the problem here? Two classes of IP addresses are completely wiped out. Every class has one range reserved. Apart from that, we have one specific range reserved in class A. So that's a lot of addresses being taken away in IP version 4. That's reason number one. Apart from that, the other reason is that as technology is evolving, we have a large number of devices that is connecting to the internet every day. It's no longer only computers. You have mobile phones, you have handheld devices, you have tablets, you have home appliances these days that actually connect to the internet. With so many more devices getting added every day, there is a need for a larger address space. That's the main reason for us to move to IP version 6. Now IP version 4 is a 32-bit address, but IP version 6 is a 128-bit address. You see the difference? That's a massive jump. The total number of possible addresses in IP version 6 is 2 power 128, and that's a very large number. It is believed that IP version 6 will never run out of addresses. But in my opinion, someday even IP version 6 is going to run out of addresses. If you ask how, now there's already a lot of devices that's connecting to the internet. I have a feeling. Someday, even humans, you and I, are going to have IP addresses assigned to them. And if that happens, imagine if every human being carries an IP address, even IP version 6 will not suffice. And then we'll have to move to something else. So that's, that's my personal opinion. We have this video recording for reference. We can come back to this recording in future and see if what I think really comes true or not. But for now, let's keep the focus on IP version 6 and start looking at the basics. Now, one of the most important things that we need to remember is the address space. From 32 bits of IP version 4 
we have now moved to 128 bits. Like we discussed, the total number of possible addresses is 2 power 128. The other important change is that IP version 6 completely eliminates broadcast traffic. If you remember from the previous videos, we talked about unicast, multicast, and broadcast. Broadcast happens when one source is sending packets to all the destinations. That kind of traffic, broadcast traffic, is no longer supported in IP version 6. Instead, broadcast is replaced with Anycast. Let's talk about Anycast for a moment. So you have this source host here, which is trying to send packets to multiple destinations here. All right. If this was multicast traffic, it would reach all the host in this diagram. In case of any cast, this packet would reach the closest destination, the nearest destination. So if this host here is the closest, the packet would reach only this node. So any cast is also called as one to nearest or one to closest communication. That's what any cast means. IP version 6 also introduces the concept of stateless address auto configuration. That means any host, remember not a router, any host on an IPv6 network has the capability to self-generate two different addresses. Number one is the link local address and the other one is the global address. These two addresses can be self-generated by a host on IPv6 network. After generating these two addresses, the host runs a special algorithm known as duplicate address detection algorithm. That's a duplicate address detection DAD algorithm to figure out or to verify that this address is actually unique on the network. Isn't that really cool stuff? A host has the capability to generate addresses and also to verify that the addresses are unique. That's really interesting. The last important thing is that IP version 6 is not compatible with IP version 4. As a result, you need to use special mechanisms like dual stack or tunneling for making IP version 4 and IP version 6 work together. That's about the basics of IP version 6. Let's now look at the IP version 6 header format. The one that you see on the top is the IP version 4 header and the one that you see on the bottom is the IP version 6 header. Now some fields in an IP version 4 header have been removed from the IP version 6 header. The goal of doing this is to simplify the IP version 6 header and to make packet processing very efficient. Let's look at the fields that have been removed. Number one is the IHL field, Internet Header Length. Now this field was important in an IP version 4 header because the IP version 4 header had a variable size. It did not have a fixed size, so the IHL field would actually give you the length of the IP version 4 header. On the other hand, an IP version 6 header is always 40 bytes in length, so you don't need the IHL field to specify the length of the header. As a result, IHL has been eliminated or removed from the IP version 6 header. The other fields that have been removed is identification, flags, and fragment offset. If you remember from the video on OSI model, we talked about fragmentation. In IP version 6, fragmentation is a little bit different. In IP version 6, fragmentation only happens at the source node. The nodes in between, or the intermediate routers, are not allowed to fragment the packets. As a result, all these three fields, identification, flags, and fragment offset, all these three actually relate to fragmentation. These are completely eliminated or removed from an IP version 6 header. Number three, options and padding. The options field is rarely used in IP version 4 header, so that has been removed along with padding. These two fields are again missing from an IP version 6 header. Those are the fields that have been completely eliminated. Now there are some fields that are actually renamed or have retained their functionality. Number one is version. In an IP version 4 packet, the version would be 4. Here, the version would be 6. Type of service. Now, this was mainly used in IP version 4 for differentiated services and for congested notification. That has been changed to traffic class in IP version 6. 
the total length field in an IP version 4 header indicates the length of the payload plus the header. In an IP version 6 header, that is payload length which indicates payload plus any extension headers. The other one is TTL. Now time to live is a value, is a numerical value that the source node of a packet assigns to the packet. Every time the packet crosses a router, the TTL value is decremented by 1. If the TTL value of a packet becomes 0, that packet is destroyed. The reason for having a TTL value or the TTL field in an IP version 4 header is that no packet should circulate forever in a network. There has to be a point where a packet has to die if it does not reach its destination. That's the reason for having TTL value. That is renamed as hop limit in IP version 6. Protocol. Now the protocol field in an IP version 4 header indicates the protocol of the payload. That is now next header in IP version 6. Those are the fields that have been renamed. Source address, destination address remain completely the same. There's one field that we've not talked about and that is the flow label. Flow label is used to identify the flow to which a packet belongs. Three values are used to identify a flow. Number one is the flow label field. Number two is the source address and number three is the destination address. These three values are together used to identify the flow to which a packet belongs. That's an IP version 6 header, much more simplified compared to an IP version 4 header and much more efficient. Let's look at the address format of an IP version 6 address.